On December 19th, 1981, a month after I came home to live with my mom as a recently baptized Bible believer, I went to the local Catholic bookstore and bought one of their Bibles. You see, I had some Roman Catholic friends. One was right next door. She had her rosary on her Bible or with it and had special indulgences for kissing her Bible or, and saying certain words. I asked her, if she read it on her own. She said basically the same thing as another Catholic one of my friends had talked to, so it's not unique with her. Oh no, I can't read the Bible on my own. It causes me problems. Oh, what kind of problems? Well, when I read the Bible and I read my catechism, they don't say the same thing. That causes me problems. So, what did you do? I'd hope she'd trust her Bible over the catechism. I just go to my priest and ask him. He tells me a bunch of stuff. It's complicated, but he knows what he's saying. So I just believe whatever he says, and then I don't have a problem. So you don't believe your Bible, but you believe your priest? Well, yeah, he's closer to God than I am. He should know. Well, wow. This lady can see that the Bible does not include Mary's ascending into heaven, the assumption of Mary, Mary being prayed to or even lifted up, and there's nothing on popes or New Testament priests or purgatory or holy orders or extreme unction, confession to a priest, none of it. The Bible even talks against people making people abstain from foods or forbidding marriage like they do with priests and nuns. But she'll talk to a priest and trust him to have it all figured out because he's closer to God than she is? I had to see what was happening for myself. What's the secret behind these Catholic Bibles? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. So I bought my own Catholic Bible, the New American Bible, uh, the official English Catholic Bible, St. Joseph, medium-sized edition. Listen here on page 11. But the task of authentically interpreting the Word of God, whether written or handed on, has been entrusted exclusively to the living teaching office of the Church, whose authority is exercised in the name of Jesus Christ. That means if you want to interpret what God said, you have to trust priests that the Catholic Church tells you to trust. In the next paragraph, it says this, It is clear, therefore, that sacred tradition, sacred scripture, and the teaching authority of the Church, in accord with God's most wise design, are so linked and joined together that one cannot stand without the others, and that all together, dot, 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 contribute effectively to the salvation of souls. So, two Roman Catholic inventions, tradition and Catholic authority, are pitted against the Bible. That's two against one. If you want to be saved, you need all three, though, and only a priest can figure out how that works. On page 12, I found this. For all of what has been said about the way of interpreting Scripture is subject finally to the judgment of the Church, which carries out the divine commission and ministry of guarding and interpreting the Word of God. They're saying, trust the Roman Catholic teachers. They're charged with guarding and interpreting the Bible, not you. When talking about Genesis on page 19, for example, it says, The Bible does not teach science. It teaches religious values. It uses these folk tales to teach a lesson. When talking about the Psalms on page 20, it says, The feeling the thought, the total poem is inspired, guided, by God, 
though it is not necessarily revealed truth. Read some Psalms. No, I'm no kidding. It actually says that. On page 22, it says about the Gospels. Until recently, they thought that the Gospel writers wanted to present us with a biography of Jesus. After much research, Bible scholars agree now that the Gospel writers wanted to write catechisms or digests of Christian teaching concerning the risen Lord Jesus. They're saying the Gospels aren't history, aren't they? Next paragraph, please. What did the authors of the Gospels do? Da, da, da. They found scores of narratives about Jesus, the beloved founder of the Christian faith. The writers took those narratives and frequently even remolded and refashioned them to bring out the lesson they wanted to teach. So, the New American Bible, the official English Catholic Bible, says that the Bible writers didn't actually write facts at all. They wrote folk tales, feelings, catechisms of Christian teaching, and remolded or refashioned narratives about Jesus that may have happened to bring out a moral lesson that they wanted to teach. Wow. Just wow. I mean, you, you see it right there. I mean, I even, I even highlighted it in red. It really amazed me. Okay, that was then, this is now. That was a 1970 edition. Surely it's changed now, right? On March 3rd, 2005, I got the updated New American Standard Bible, the New Catholic Translation, Catholic Study Edition. It has all new notes. And look, it's printed by Catholic Bible Press, a division of Thomas Nelson Publishers, the same people who make the New King James. I jump to the section called Interpreting the Bible. Here are a few snippets. From page 12. Interpreting the Bible, understanding what it has to say, is not a simple task. Even these highly trained scholars have difficulty in knowing exactly what the original authors meant to say. So if the great Catholic scholars don't know what the original authors meant to say, what chance is there for little old me? You see what they're doing? From page 13, at the end, for once they stated things simply. The church produced the scriptures. The church recognized the extent of the scriptures. The church interprets the scriptures. People have disputed my book, Did the Catholic Church Give Us the Bible? The Catholic Church never claimed they gave us the Bible. Oh yeah, they did. And you just heard it for yourself. Neil Obstat, imprimatur. You don't think you need a priest to interpret the scriptures for you, do you? Or do you? In modern Bibles, including Thomas Nelson's New King James, our notes saying in essence, the best manuscripts do not contain these verses, the oldest manuscripts do not contain these verses, the or something else. And you're left not knowing which text to choose. So what do you do? Well, I just asked my pastor. Well, I just asked my professor. Well, I just asked the scholars. So... Are they really your professor, or pastor, or priest? What's the difference? God bless you, and have a wonderful day.